Hi everybody, welcome to the track number 8. This is the first class where I give the uh, overview of this track. My name is Anibal Azevedo and now we're gonna talk, we're gonna end this talk uh, about how we can build an artificial intelligence technique to container port uh, operations and we finally get the most important thing from this series of tracks which is the concept of the automaton startup yeah it's gonna be a very interesting concept and also we're gonna use this to build very interesting things but be before this let's present some some things here to present the 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 page the main page of this uh, track as you can see here we have the python symbol Three snakes, Ouroboros symbol. Also, we have the Google Collab that we are using, or the Infinite uh, symbol that resembles to Moebius uh, uh, string. And also, we have the Jupiter with a symbol uh, that is the notebook that we are using in Google Collab, which we are applying Python concepts and the automaton uh, concept will resemble to these symbols. It's not a uh, handle that we put these symbols, okay? But most, most important thing, is not that these symbols, is the concept of how we can build an automaton startup. Let's see. And uh, we, ha we are using these concepts that we are gonna talk in this track from this work that will be in the description of this video the automatic generator of loading rules and its applications on logistic operations so we uh, we wrote this work and present in this conference also we have wrote another work on the implementation of simulation based on representation by rules methodology to play import logistics operations so uh why we are doing this because port logistics is is a very very difficult and complex environment to to build some planning or to build some uh, scheduling or to plan some kind of operations and also most important than this uh, as you can see here this could have many variables and uh, many containers or equipments like quake cranes or ships and uh, this is uh, a very in difficult environment to be planned or to schedule activities uh, most important in this you have many ports and these ports are all connected uh, in a supply chain as you can see here using the this soft online software marine traffic you can see the ships in a very good detail like using uh, google maps but to visualize the ships where are the ships and the kind of ships uh in the uh, na online uh information you have the data uh with two minutes or uh, one minute delay or even online so it's a very interesting thing to see the complexity of planning something in this very very hard uh <laughs> environment so uh this principle would be very interesting to know this uh love this uh, the principle of incompatibility uh, can be said that something like that stated informally the essence of this principle is that as the complexity of a system increases uh, your ability to make precise and yet significant statements about its behavior diminishes until a threshold is reached beyond which precision and significance or relevance become almost mutually exclusive where it characteristics so uh why i'm telling this because our approach that we use in previously tracks is just about this thing so if you have a very complex system with a lot of parts or a lot of agents it will be very hard to plan something or to do some kind of planning because every time if you don't model uh a specific behavior or a specific behavior of a specific agent you will have something different and your planning just not help you 
So uh, what is the essences of what we are using? We are using rules. Rules can be uh, can be said that are a kind of if else uh, functions, and also the, you can convert these if else functions in a binary variable like mathematical programmings do, and also you can convert this if else in a sequence of one and four of integer numbers. Okay, so our approach here is how we can convert these if-else functions in a kind of uh, sequence of numbers. Instead of using binary variables, which approach is not exactly a very good one if your uh, system increases in complexity. So your challenge is just to avoid this if-else then, because if, if then else can be very, very difficult to do manually. And uh, if we can transform the, this if else uh, functions in a kind of integer number sequences, it will be very interesting and easy to maintain the or to generate new rules or to maintain the program. Okay, so that's that's it. Very interesting thing. So uh, we presented in one uh, the first congress that we we said before this methodology. So remember that in the description of this video, you'll find the, the articles, the, the link to the articles and the material to read. But I will say in briefly the, about this. So the first step to apply the representation by rules methodology is to map the agents and their relation through the system process. Select the agents that will be studied and the areas where they operate. So this is the first step, and after doing this, after, after building this map, uh, you can proceed to the second step, which is describe all possible agents operations to complete a process. For each operation, describe the rules, and this is the main thing here, that could be employed. Also, you can proceed to the third step, combine rules into a hybrid simulation based on discrete event simulation and agent simulation. And finally, you can find this step four, test a different combination of rules and identify the one that should be adopted considering the best performance of the overall system. So uh, this is the representation by rules step one. So Im uh, imagine that we are dealing with container ship and gray cranes, which we have talked about in previous tracks. So this is uh, the map. And we selected just two agents here, and uh, we, we will study the iterations of, of these two agents. So obviously you can uh, increase your uh, view or your map, but we'll, <laughs> as you increase the number of agents and behaviors and iterations, the simulation will be more complex, but the approach uh, uh, also remains the same, okay? So uh, in the step two, uh, uh, as you selected the possible agents, you can uh, map the, their operations to complete a process. For uh, each operation, you can uh, describe this uh, kind of operation in terms of uh, rules. Okay, so uh, here we have the birth area, and the, we have in the birth area the ships, the ship arrival can be uh, explored, can be decomposed, and the, after arrival, you can perform unloading or loading operations to the quay area. Uh, in the quay area, you can find cranes, quay 1 and quay 2. And also, you have uh, some uh, operations here. And these operations can be represented uh, or can, can change according to specific rules. Okay. So, this is the, 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 the diagram that we build for these two agents. And uh, what why this is interesting? Because you can uh, think this as a supply chain of rules, okay? So imagine that each agent and each agent operation has some rules. You can change these rules and see what happens in the rest of the operations, okay? Also, you can build uh, a kind of physical layer and this abstraction 
this will be abstracted to a digital layer and in this digital layer you can see their uh, rules and see if the, the we change these rules what ha what can happen to the system okay so you can have a kind of chain of rules imagine that you have several agents several operations and you, as you change this the way that we are doing these operations you are changing also uh, the manner that system could happen or could uh, solve something so uh, what is next here we have uh, exactly what i said you can expand this unloading loading uh, rules operations or quake crane positions and movement rules also you can want to map this yard equipments and agents here yard unloading loading operation rules and also how to move these portals or the uh, vehicles in this yard okay that's interesting and what is mo most most interesting you can uh, create a more abstract layer saying that we have uh, two classes of objects we have some storage area uh, where you can perform unloading and loading rules and also you have some uh, navigation areas which uh, we have some vehicles and some traffic rules for them you can also thank the quake cranes a specific case of this okay so we have some places where we put the cargo and we have to organize them and some places where we can have the uh, this kind of transport to move the cargo okay why this is important because we, we can reuse the unloading or loading the concept of loading and unloading rules that we made for the quake for to for the container ship uh, why this is important to be studied because supply chain logistics is suffering for uh, many many uh, unpredictable events that are made in the price of uh, of uh, to, to transport things uh, rise uh, as a crazy thing okay so we have some kind of rates spike and this can hurt the commerce or the, the, the uh, trade between nations so it's why it, it, and this is why it's important to study these things okay uh, uh, just to see one aspect that should be uh, addressed when we are studying this kind of things uh, is that the organization of cargo could affect the, uh, the total time to perform operations here we have a kind of blocking containers as you can see here this is a kind of blocking container so if you are trying to move this container or to access these containers you should move before this so you have the same situation that you can find in container ship in the yard a little bit different at this time but almost the same thing that we uh, we try to solve we try to address in the container ship okay uh, this is reinforce this concept uh, that we can uh, have these two classes of objects okay that's interesting to use some knowledge or to to readapt the knowledge that we apply for some uh, specific agents uh, also, uh, you can uh, use this view where we, uh, stacks uh, are kind of okay. We have some space, but this space is limited in a container ship, in a port yard, or even in a container inside a container, or in a peak area in a warehouse. We should use this organization of cargo, the stacks organization. And why I'm saying this? Because uh, just just what we talked about in a congress uh, how you can generate automatically a procedure to load uh, cargo anything boxes containers i don't know what we are trying to organize in a stack okay but if you are if you have a stack if, and if you are trying to uh, organize things in a stack way uh, so this procedure can be very useful so what we are saying here is just uh, something like this uh, we have to find uh, how you can find uh, automatically 
many many ways to fill a regular a grid space okay so uh, the first thing that we should observe is that uh, we, we should uh, obey some physical laws so one cargo for each space at a time we can have uh, this two things uh, occupying the same space at the same time you you can you should avoid floating objects okay we are not allowed to avoid the gravity and finally uh, this is uh, uh, an example of what we should not do why because uh, it, it will result in this thing okay we are trying to fill at the top not at bottom okay so this is the bottom of your stacks and this is the top of your stacks and uh, what's interesting it's interesting to perform some mathematical analysis before uh, creating something uh, you have this flat way inside what's flat way why I'm saying this because you're gonna uh, kind in, in a kind of uh, row wise now uh, so you're gonna fill the space by row and you can uh, can uh, choose and imagine that we have uh, this dimension this space with m uh, rows and n, n columns so uh, if you have this uh, you can choose this space this space you have this number of possibilities also if you choose this place to first put some cargo you can choose you still have this number of possibilities until you reach the last uh, the top row you uh, we will find uh, these possibilities and here in the green space here we have this number of possibilities and after filling these uh, rows until you fill all, all rows we have this number of, of possibilities so this is the number of possible feasible uh, sequences this is a large number as you can see here you have many possibilities to build some feasible sequence uh, you have another way to fill some spaces uh, which is what we call one way why this because uh, this avoiding a complexity and some uh, companies use this strategy like okay this area will be filled first and the next the next area so this is a very common strategy in, in the industry sometimes uh, the people use this uh, one way uh, special case so uh, you you just have to f uh, choose at what will be the f the, the column that you will uh, fill so we choose this first column so we have to select uh, other columns and we have this po and total number of combinations that we can find okay I can select this and fill this column or I can select this and fill uh, until the end so uh this is the remaining possible combinations after we, we finish this first column but uh, at first we have any possible permutations okay so uh if you 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 follow the uh, complete strategy uh, we don't care about physical laws in terms of floating objects so you have this uh, this number of possible sequences but this is not uh, good because we can have infeasible solutions infeasible sequences you can also choose the flat way or the wall way okay so imagine this is very simple square space this grid space which has four rows and four columns this will be the number of possible sequence and as you can see here it's not uh, a coincidence that sometimes uh, uh, people or uh, enterprises f find this one way very attractive since this reduces uh, uh, the complexity and can be a very attractive strategy but you can also find another strategy that is not difficult to follow and has a lot of more a lot of more uh possible of feasible movements okay 
So why we are doing this uh, mathematical analysis? Because we used this to build your uh, function in Python. This is a very compact uh, function that we made in Python uh, to build and handle uh, these uh, possible sequences. This is the function that we are presenting here. And this is the computational time that we uh, have uh, using Google Colab, okay, configuration. So you, uh, why this? This is the dimension of the space. Uh, 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 as you can see here, we are not using just a two dimension. We are using a, a three dimensional space and this number of uh, elements, spaces to fill. So you can build very quickly a, a rule. And th uh, this is the total amount of time to build a rule, to fill in a feasible way this environment. Okay, with this number of possible spaces. Uh, so we apply this to storage planning problem where we, we are just interested to build some uh, uh, rules to fill the space. Why uh, we are doing this? We are explaining that the ship must travel through, through ports and you have to put some cargo inside the ship and see the number of movements that you're going to perform since each time you move a container inside the ship, you're going to pay a, a, a great amount of, in terms of dollars, okay? So we have to perform some unloading and loading operations. We have to avoid some uh, problems that we are not allowed to, for example, to move uh, this yellow container without moving what is in the top of this stack. So we, we already said, something about this in the previous tracks and if we are already talking about these uh, rules to feel how this could impact also in the stability of the container ship okay so depending on what kind of rule you create or use you can greatly affect the stability the ship stability so what we are talking exactly so uh, remember that we defined your system, what is the weakness of your system? We have to build manually all the rules. So it could be laborious and error prone, or it could be time consuming. And sometimes you have to think about, or you have to use or test some different rules. And it's, it could have some unexpected event, or you have to change they're so fast that there is not enough time to build another uh, rule from uh, the beginning, from scratch. So it could be very interesting to have a high velocity uh, procedure like that, that could build very a lot of uh, rules. Imagine uh, this automatic procedure to build rules, feasible rules, and to fill space instead of doing this, okay, manually. And uh, we did this, we uh, already uh, made this, and the, for the first time I'm presenting this, I, I didn't uh, present this in any Congress, how we can use this generation of these rules. And I presented how to, uh, to build automatically the sequence of rules but how to incorporate this in the uh, the knowledge that we uh, talked about in the previously tracks, like the genetic algorithm or the simulator using Quake Cranes and the container ship, how you can put all together, I'm gonna present in the next class of this track. But I have to tell you something about this. This is the function that build uh, very fast any kind of rules. And this is the function that you can create a dictionary of rules. So you can create rules and also you can create a dictionary of rules. And with this dictionary of rules, you can apply for a specific agent of your system. Uh, this is the uh, storage planning problem. How much time we, we spent by building some uh, rules and remember this total number of movements so this is the total time to build uh, the rules I, I believe that we build uh, 
one rule. So to build six rules, we built a dictionary of rules with six rules. So I spent, okay, it's not a very fast time, but remember we are just using the notebook that we are using for free, not a super power computer. It's just, you can have a cellular phone and click on the notebook and they can create rules for you anywhere you are using nothing, paying nothing, okay? Just clicking and generating rules. So this is the, the patterns that we got by uh, to field uh, the container ship in bay one and two and bay one and two, for instance, one and two, okay? So this is a small size, uh, just to illustrate that we are generating a uh, feasible sequence or how they are, uh, how they could be. Uh, also, we are, uh, we expanded this, uh, this work from this Congress since we, uh, we incorporated at the simulation optimization framework that we saw into previously tracks the rules of generator. So we also uh, in inserted or used the quick query rules. We don't have a, at this moment a generator for this kind of, to do this kind of equipment, but we are thinking about this. So uh, this is the quick crane, how you can incorporate the quick crane. And it's important to incorporate these dynamics to understand how much time we're gonna spend the ship in the uh, unloading and loading operations in the container world. So this is the simulation, a very, very uh, small and uh, simulation based on discrete event simulation and agent simulation, okay? So we, we can create different kinds of rules and test several combinations of these rules applied uh, to the ports that the ship will travel. So you can build a lot of rules uh, unloading and loading and retrieving or quake crane rules and also see what we get in terms of efficiency or, or how much time we're going to spend in terms of operations. Remember that we said before, now we have the, the genetic algorithm, we have the simulation algorithm and the, uh, for each uh, for each uh, for each combination of rules that we have an individual representing this, we can apply a decoder, but most important, this decoder uh, could call a, a rules database on loading, loading and query rules. So now we have changed this a little. Why? Because this rules database, the loading rules now, we uh, replace these loading rules, they not replace the loading rules, but these loading rules can be fastly changed or modified or created by GS files 3D algorithm that we made here. And this can uh, uh, replace the low actual, the actual loading rules for two another ones and see what happens. This is very interesting. And we are gonna show in the next class uh how you can do this or what 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 is the code so uh this is interesting because uh you can have this let put again this okay you can have okay i can uh, build uh, new agents and build new rules for these agents and see what happens in the supply chain in the the same way that we are, uh, have the conway's game of life but instead, uh, the Conway's game of life, you can have the container game of life, okay? Or the container logistics game of life. And so I, I applied this chain of rules for these agents. What happened? What kind of patterns I get? I get? What kind of uh, queries I'm getting, okay? So I can build a kind of metaverse. Uh, we can uh, use some data from, uh, for example, marine traffic. And using this data, you can build new kind of rules and see what happens in our ports, okay? So uh, what I'm planning to do, I'm, I'm just writing at this moment, the Automaton Startup uh, book or how to code in a Python, a rule-based container port management system, okay? 
this is an important concept because I can build a program that can build how to operate a container port system or uh, operate how to do the operations in, in this port instead of doing anything I can I just don't need anyone to build the rules the system can build new rules I can uh, automate even how to build the rules of the system and I don't need uh, a lot of uh, money or people to build a, a whole system that will manage automatically the a container port and the second book in the sequence of this uh, I will talk about more specifically how you can uh, use web scrapping simulation optimization and self-generated rules program oh it will be very very crazy book but uh, I believe that is interesting because uh, you're gonna uh, use two concepts here how you can use data and how using this data you can suggest different kinds of operations in a very fast way of, of doing things okay so I hope you find this video interesting and useful and also inspiring for new ideas I as I finish the book and I'm just writing the book I will publish the second uh, class of this track until I didn't uh, finish this book I will not will not publish the second class of this track because I just trying to submit these ideas in the form of a book to a Congress an international Congress of this year so uh, this is the reason why I will not publish in this uh, in the, the next day or in the sequence of this video another video because I'm just finishing the book and when I finish the book and submit it to the Congress I will publish the video and explaining all things that will be very much better explained in the book okay so this is the the, the end of this video thank you for your attention and I hope you'll find you in the next video see you Bye.